Hi all in this video, let's take a look at finding an implicit derivative and then we'll also take a, a look at a picture. This is a, both a conventional lesson and perhaps a slightly less conventional lesson, please keep that in mind. x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now this is the equation of a circle, keep that in mind. Let's just differentiate each term. So I'm going to form the derivative of each term one by one. Now you should know something that in this context when you say something like this, for example, y squared, what this really means is the following, to be clear. It means y of x and the quantity is squared. That tells you something important. It tells you that it's y of x squared. You need to know that because when you differentiate, you got to use the chain rule for that reason. So we just write y squared, but really mean y of x and the quantity squared. So now let's differentiate, that means I'm going to just differentiate each term. So x squared differentiated with respect to x, to be very clear, is 2x by the power rule. y squared differentiated with respect to x means this. You take this 2 and you bring that down by the chain rule. So you bring that down so it becomes 2. Then you copy the inner part, which is just y or y of x if you want to be very detailed. And then you differentiate the inner part by the chain rule, so that would be just y prime. We don't know what y is, so we just say y prime, that's all. And then on the right side, when you differentiate the 1, that's a constant, that doesn't change, so its rate of change is derivative is 0. Just like that. So you basically go across, you differentiate x squared to get 2x, you differentiate y squared to get 2y, y prime, and you differentiate the 1 to get 0. Once that is in place, now we can solve for y prime for example. So I'm going to do minus 2x over here and over here. Okay, let's see. So this will cancel with that basically. So I'm going to have now 2y times y prime equals negative 2x. Then just divide across by, for example, 2y like that. So when I carry that out, let's see, this part right here can be crossed off. That can be crossed off. That can be crossed off. And so now we have that y prime equals negative x over y. So this is kind of the conventional step right here. So this is not anything probably unfamiliar to you. It's kind of the conventional step. y prime equals negative x over y. Now, let's take a look at interpreting this in, ter in terms of uh, circle and pictures. So you can understand what all of this means, visually that is. So first of all, go back to the original. This right here represents the equation of a unit circle. x squared plus y squared equals 1. That tells me i got to draw a circle over here. So let's do that next. I'm going to put my vertical axis this way. Let me make sure I've got the right color in place. Okay, so this is my y-axis. Let's make this our x-axis in this direction. And let's add some key pieces of information. Now let's draw in the circle. So let's see, I have to be really careful the way I draw the circle, make sure everything fits just so. So I gotta begin right here, I gotta pull this way. I wanna make sure everything aligns perfectly as much as possible. All right, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so now in this context, this is a point we can label. Let's label that point. So imagine that this is the point that looks like this. The x at this point, for example, is one and y equals zero, it's that point. 1 comma 0 on the unit circle. Now just by looking at this you can tell that the following is true. Equation that the tangent line here would be vertical. Looks like this. That's the tangent line. It's vertical. Which means that the slope at 1 comma 0 should be undefined just by looking at the tangent line. And remembering back to simple algebra that for example vertical lines have an undefined slope. But can we make what we've just done with the calculus match that? Well, we can. Take a look. So, for example, our derivative was the following. Let me erase this bit here. Our derivative was the following, that y prime was equal to negative x over y. Well, in this context, x is 1, and then y is 0, so that confirms that it's d and e. This just confirms what perhaps you learned in basic algebra. Vertical lines have undefined slope. That's all it is. Everything that we learn in basic algebra carries over to here directly. Okay, math is a continuum. Everything is always relatable to something previously learned. Okay, here. As you can see, the tangent line again is vertical. Let me label this point as an example. 
So this might be the point where x is negative 1 and then y is equal to 0. Let's confirm that the slope is undefined. So again, y prime, that is, will be equal to negative x over y. So you just replace x with negative 1. Let me be clear, right? This is negative 1 here. So when I make use of this, I'm going to have negative from the formula, and the value is negative 1 right here from the x-coordinate. Okay? And this is all set over y equals 0, which, again, let me clean this up a little bit here so it fits better, which, again, means that we have d and e. It does not exist. Vertical tangent line. That's all it is. Now, what's another interesting point here? Take a look. Up here at the top of the circle, I might have the following. This is another point on the circle. The coordinates here would be the following. So x equals, let's say, 0 now, and y equals 1 at the top of the circle. Just remember, we're traveling up the vertical axis. And remember that this here is the origin. Let me label that, right? This is the origin. So this is x equals 0, y equals 0. So when you travel up this axis here, you get to that point where x equals 0 and y equals 1. Now I can tell just by looking at this that it seems like the value of the derivative should be 0 because as you can see the tangent line is horizontal. So let's just confirm it though in terms of our equation. So we have the following. y prime, so that's negative x over y, and then you just stick in this pair of coordinates, 0, 1. So that's going to give me negative 0 over 1, which is 0. And that just confirms what we see with the tangent horizontal line. The other place that occurs, as you can imagine, is on the bottom of the circle, right here. Okay, so that looks like this. And here, at this point, as you can see, let me erase this a bit. We don't need that here, strictly speaking. I want to clean things up a little bit. I'm going to have the following. This is the point 0, comma, negative 1. This is my x and this is my y. So I plug into the derivative. So y prime equals negative x over y. That's going to be negative 0 over negative 1, which again is 0. Confirming that the slope is 0, or in other words, the tangent line is horizontal. The other thing that might be interesting is to understand what happens, for example, at some other point. So what I mean by that is, let's scroll over here, for example, to this point right here. Let's study what happens around this point. So let's see. We're going to estimate the value of f prime, or I'm sorry, y prime rather, just by looking here. So when I look here, I see the following, that I have basically, I go down, and then I go over, and it looks like the two legs of my little slope triangle are about the same. So whatever delta y is, it's equal to delta x. Except the only difference is that y is going down and x is going from left to right, so it's positive. So like, whatever this is, this might be negative, and whatever that is, that's positive, because you're going from left to right. And here for the y, you're going from higher to lower values. That tells you, for example, that as an estimate, delta y over delta x is probably equal to negative 1. Not probably, but definitely. And again, I know that because the following. Right? This leg, whatever that value is, it's the same as that value. The only difference is one is positive, one negative. So when you form the ratio, you get negative 1. That's an estimate of the slope at that point. Which also means that I can pretty much say that y prime equals negative 1 right here. And you could check that pretty easily simply by remembering that at this point, that point right here, that looks like it's the 45 degree line this way. You see that? So that tells you the following, that here the x-coordinate is the root of 2 over 2 and the y-coordinate is the root of 2 over 2. Think back to the unit circle and basic trick. It's, everything always fits together. So that would tell you that here, let me write this out x equals the root of 2 over 2 and the y coordinate is the root of 2 over 2 which means that y prime to be very official would be negative x over y which would be negative root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2 which simplified after you've done the canceling is as i said just negative 1 right here that's important to understand and the other thing that might be interesting would be on this side over here. Take a look. Let me zoom in on this point. So this point right here. And when I zoom in here, you can probably just estimate the slope. And you really should just to build up your intuition. 
So it looks like around this point, every time you go a little bit this way, that's my delta X, you're going to go about the same amount in that direction, which is delta Y. And because I'm going from left to right, delta X is positive. I'm going from lower to higher, delta Y is positive, which means around here, that slope should be equal to about positive 1, just by looking at it graphically. But let's actually find this. So I'm going to have Y prime equals... And again, based on my knowledge of the unit circle, what I can say is here, the x coordinate would be negative root 2 over 2, and the y coordinate would be positive root 2 over 2. So this is just coming from the unit circle at that point. So when I plug them into y prime, what I will have then is negative, and now be very careful of the negative root of 2 over 2 divided by the root of 2 over 2. And here, cancel this, cancel that, right? The negatives cancel off also. And you end up with this value at the end of positive 1, which is what I found just by looking at the little slope triangle because the dy and the dx are about the same. You're going from left to right and then from lower to higher values. So even if I estimated it, it was also dy over dx was equal to positive 1. So it works out the way I said. Let me zoom out here. I hope this has been somewhat helpful to you. If it has, please kindly leave a like. It all makes a difference. I'll see you in another video.